sing if our charms are fell. If you pull this charm, we'll make you rich. If you love sick, it will cure your itch. I'm singing about conjure man. I'm singing about charms I sell. If you don't love your husband, then I say disappear in powder, make him melt away. I'll I'll take one. Yes, about the conjure man. I'm singing about charms I sell. If you don't love your husband, then I say disappear in powder, make chosen for queen. You'll find out soon enough, dear, when the governor unmasks her. And when he says to me, house tricks, I says, well, I don't know, but I hear she's in Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, girls. You know better than that. Balcony it. All right, Joe, but just you wait till you ask me to put it on the cuff again. Just you wait. Yeah, he ought to either give up brass buttons or gambling. Thank you, Eve. Thank you, Eve. Who do you think you is busting down the street like you own? We is quality folks, that's who we is, poor trash. Don't you call me poor trash. I's got enough money at home to buy you, fill your big teeth with gold, then give you away. Oh, go on, get away, go on. I got much right to see who's going to be queen here tonight is you quality folks. Mr. Lincoln emancipated and proclamated me. Come on, Napoleon. Where is she? Well, your father said Come that. Come on, what'd you do to you, scoundrel? Now, where is it? Mother? Please, Mr. Allen, I think you've had enough of her society tonight. Is there no gallantry in you, Napoleon? Don't you realize a queen is being crowned tonight and one must always toast a queen? Ain't no sense in toasting her to a crisp. I still think you better leave it with me, sir. It'll be much happier with me. We were made for each other, and I promise never to stop caring until the day I die. They can't breath out of Gator's hand. It'll all bring you luck at the promised land. Good evening, Miss Dallas. Don't you want to buy a little charm for Luxie? Not for me, Joe. It'd take more than a voodoo charm to change the luck of the oldest. I've seen it about country I've seen it about Get over, don't you see a lady is trying to get down? Oh, shit, why don't you be yourself? You don't have to be right. rushed over. You got all that old... Shut up. All right. Right. Ladies and gentlemen of Memphis, at this season of the year when our great city gives itself over to the gala spirit of carnival, it is our custom and privilege to select a queen. A girl who must typify the very flower of the South. From what I hear, Jack Morgan ought to be appointing himself king. Yes, political king of Memphis. I wouldn't trust that Jack Morgan in my garden. My husband says he's done a lot for Memphis and a lot for your husband. Queen who is the very essence of beauty. And it is no idle boast to say that this great city of ours has for long years cradled the most beautiful, the most charming, and the most aristocratic ladies of all Dixie. So, ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me great personal pleasure to present the man who will unmask your queen, His Excellency the Governor. As representative of the people of the great state of Tennessee, I take pleasure in introducing your queen of the Mardi Gras.
roll downstairs like that without falling flat on her. Mary Lou. Why, it's Jenny Blake of the Memphis Bell. A Jezebel who runs a gambling house. Our boss! It's Jenny! It's my baby! The queen of the carnival! Hallelujah! 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 Trust you're enjoying your little joke. Joke? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think this is a joke, you're all fired wrong. Why shouldn't I be queen? I'm the one they voted for. And if some of you are a little disappointed that you weren't chosen, that's not my fault. It's not my fault either that I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Maybe some of you should get out your history books. I can name you a lot of queens that came from the wrong side of town. And a lot of Lulus that came from the right side. I want to thank you ladies for coming. As for the gentlemen, you know you're always welcome at my place, the Memphis Bell, where you can be yourselves. And in the meantime, whoever wants to take over this being queen, it's theirs for the asking. And to show you there are no hard feelings, I'll toss in a cast iron bustle with the compliments of the house. <laughs> This is downright scandal. Chin up, General. Your mustache is at half mast. Oh, bringing us down here, making fools of us in front of our wives. Easy now, Your Honor. No harm men, no harm done. I told you Memphis society wouldn't put up with making a queen out of your Memphis belle. Make a queen out of Jen? Why, boys, she is a queen. And any time she wants to hold court, you'll be there. thing away or I'll peel you down to your bustle. There ain't no bustle, honey. That's me. Get me my hat. Miss Jenny, seeing as how you used to abdicate it. Take it, burn it. I don't give a pick you what you do with it. I look better than this anyway. Mr. Morgan says he doesn't like you in that get up. He says it's too inebriated. What does that no good son of a horse thief know You'll about? You'll have to stop running down my father. He was awfully sensitive. Get out of here. And the next time you enter a lady's boudoir, knock. Jack Morgan, if you show me any sympathy, I'll, I'll beat your brains out. Sympathy? You ask for what you got. Here. Something in your eye. There's nothing in my eye but murder. Never you mind, baby. You was a queen what is a queen. And a hundred years from the day this town will still be talking about you. And a hundred years from today, the Jenny Blakes will still be getting the axe from the Blue Bloods. Blue Bloods? I could tell them a thing or two about their husbands. Yes, but you won't. Why not? Yeah, why not? Shut up. Why not? Because you are a lady. Now you're talking, Mr. Jack. Get out of here. Yes, get out, or I'll ship you back to Africa. Yes, sir, I was going. After what happened tonight, have you still got that society bug in your craw? More than ever. You're stupid. You know that, don't you, baby? There wasn't a woman at that opera house tonight that wasn't envious of you. If you don't believe me, think how dull their lives are. Save that fat shuffle for the numbskulls that come to the Memphis Bell. Maybe I can get it through that blonde dome of yours this way. Take this layout. Personally, I like it. But they think it's a museum where you pay to see freaks. Oh, look at that hair. To me, it's gold. But to them, bleach is only used on sheets. Oh, forget them, Jen. Think what they did to you tonight. I knew they would. You knew they would? Sure. The men had to come, but they told me their wives would walk out on you. And you let me go out there and make a fool of myself? Yep. Why, you double-crossing son uh -uh. of a... Uh-uh, remember father's feelings. Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Because I love you. You got a swell way of showing it. Love you enough to show you once and for all that the two don't mix. Our kind and theirs. <laughs> Look, sugar, you don't know how lucky you are. A handsome duck like me, fancy duds from Paris, and sparklers enough to light up all Tennessee. Oh, Jack, you don't understand. You won't understand. It's what I dreamed of all my life. Crazy dream. 
Just because I was born in a Mississippi hollow, because Mother wore her eyes out doing plain sewing, because my father died of swamp fever trying to make a few potatoes grow, is that why I'm being punished? Who's punishing you, baby? When I was a kid, I used to go up there to that big house on the hill, peek through a picket fence. And what did you think you saw? Everything I wanted and still want. To, to be respectable, to live up there with those fine people, to be a civilized human being. I don't want to be a gambling house gal all my life. I want to be quality folk. Bankrupt gentry with patches in their pants. I want those patches. Oh, Miss Jenny. Most ready for your number now. You'll find those patches tougher to get than the diamonds you're wearing. Tough, huh? I'll bet you that those same people who walked out on me tonight will dance for me for their supper. Most of them could use a square meal. A fine bodyguard you are. Where have you been all day? Boss, what happened to me shouldn't happen to a dog. What happened? You told me to collect that money from Kramer. Yeah? Well, I went to his house, and he wanted to throw me down the steps. How do you know? How do I know? Because he threw me down. I thought you said he only wanted to throw you down. Well, if he didn't want to, would he throw me down? Why don't you send him back to Russia? Hey, Jenny, how's it feel a big crown? <laughs> Now I know. He's winning. Why don't you ask him to dance? <laughs> I did. Well, when you heal up, try again. Hello, Jenny. How you doing? Evening, Jen. Hello, Paul. Black. Thanks, mister. Looks like you're the only one that took up my invitation. Well, my bottle ran out, ma'am, and the instincts of a homing pigeon led me directly to your place. Fourteen red wind. It's my body you're supposed to guard. Sorry, boss, but that's my trouble. I can't say no. Boris, better go help at the bar, and no nipping between serves. Yes, ma'am. Young Alderson's losing pretty heavily, isn't he? Mm -hmm. With both hands. What a crust. And the family silver on its way to the pawn shop. What are you talking about? The Alderson plantation. It's going to be sold next week for taxes. The shadows? Yeah. Say, I ought to buy it and give it to you for a playhouse. Alan Alderson wants you to take his IOU. Alan Alderson? You can tell him his credit's about as good around here as Confederate money. Just a minute. I'll take it. Have you gone crazy? Maybe. Well, you've got about as much chance of getting that money back as I have of leading a choir. That's my business. Less chance. There you are, Mr. Allison. Oh, thank you. you all welcome to the Memphis Bell. This evening, we are presenting for your edification the most spectacular production of your favorite number, High Up in the Balloon Boys. <laughs> Featuring your very talented and charming young hostess, Miss Jenny Blake. <laughs> A Tennessee Bell, who did captivate once a magnificent swell. He was envoy, ambassador, or something rare to King What's-His-Name of... I do not know where. T'was at Saratoga, a year come next June. And we walked, and we talked, uh, by the light of the moon. Uh, there was squeezing of hands, followed up by a kiss. <laughs> and as far as I remember, I felt just like this. Up and up balloon, boys, up and up balloon. All among the little stars sailing round the moon. Up and 
a balloon, boys, up in a balloon. There's something very jolly being up in a balloon. Up in a balloon, boys, up in a balloon. All among the little stars, sailing on the moon. Eighteen red wings. I practiced a tear. I got up a blush. And my veil was a dear. The parson was ready. Likewise the champagne. But ah, oh, my false lover, I ne'er saw him again. Oh! The wretch! The wretch! The scoundrel! The scoundrel! The scoundrel! The scoundrel! The scoundrel! The great! The your service and in your debt. Up to your ears. Unsociable fellow, your croupier. He divested me of my credit at 5,000 and said you wanted to see me. I thought you might want to redeem these. Well, unfortunately, I can't. Can't? Of course, with your back turned, I could tear them up. Ah, uh, but being a gentleman, I wouldn't. Nope. You only leave me one way out. Have you a gun? That wouldn't wind up this affair. You'd still owe me the money, dead or alive. You know, for thousands of years, gentlemen have been killing themselves over gambling debts, and not one of them ever thought of that. You're pretty desperate, aren't you? Maybe I could help. Don't offer me a rabbit's foot. <laughs> I tried that. I have a proposition to make to you. I have what you need, money. And you have what I want, background, position, and a name that everyone respects. Not recently. I want that name. Are you proposing to me, my dear? Call it that if you want to. I'm honored, ma'am. Dear, I think you need this more than I do. I know it's unladylike to take advantage of the situation, but you're in a fix, and I am taking advantage of it. Charm, but I refuse to be swept off my feet. I understand the shadows is being sold for taxes next week. Yes, I had hoped that by a turn of the wheel I might save it. It's a pity to lose it. Nobody but an Alderson has ever lived there. Nobody but an Alderson ever should. Well, how about it? Shall we drink to a bad bargain? She just came in. She's up in her room. Excuse me, gentlemen.
babe. Where have you been? What's going on? Don't touch that fire. Have you gone crazy? Let it burn. You need a fire on a cold night like this. I'm not that cold. I said let it burn. Now, wait a minute, babe. Half this boat belongs to me. All right. Go ahead. Put out your hat. You have gone crazy. I believe in burning my boats behind me. Then there'd be nothing left to remind Memphis that Jenny Blake ever lived. You're going somewhere, baby? Yes. And take your hat off in front of a lady. I just married Alan Alderson. into your bones. You know, this is the first time I've ever looked forward to coming home. Good morning, Napoleon. Good morning, sir. Jenny, the Aldersons. How do you do? The Aldersons? Jenny, my wife. Oh, Alan. Oh, I forgot to carry you across the threshold. Have you gone daft, sir? Oh, come now, Father. No Alderson ever brought a bride home without carrying her across the threshold. Surely you must have carried my mother across. You will please not mention your mother at this time. Welcome to the shadows, my dear. Catherine? Yes, Julia. Just a minute. I know how you all feel, and I I reckon I don't blame you. Very generous of you. If you were clever enough, young woman, to take advantage of my son's deplorable condition and maneuver him into a marriage, you would be clever Please. enough... Please. I know this is an awful shock to you. Of course, you know who I am. We do indeed. But what you don't know is how hard I'm going to try to be a wife here that Alan respects, that you all respect. Julia, call the carriage. We'll find a way to arrange an annulment. Just a minute, Father. I must have neglected to tell you about Jenny. You may not be able to find my wife's family crest in the Social Gazette, but she has something that I think you'll appreciate even more. Her financial position is unassailable. You know, money. Money, the stuff they make in Washington, not Richmond. <laughs> we have a whole cellar full of Confederate money, but Father's like me when it comes to gambling. He always picks the wrong color. He put his money down in the gray, and up came the blue. Alan, you must realize her presence in this house is utterly impossible. As you wish, Father. But as Jenny goes, so goes the shadows. Oh, sounds like a title of a song, doesn't it? As Jenny goes, so goes the shadows. As Jenny goes, so goes the shadows. Well, how about it? Aunt Julia, dear, aren't you going to call for the carriage? Wait, Julia. I thought so. Practical people, the Aldersons. Why, oh, what gloom. This is cause for celebration. Please, Miss Julia, Mr. Alderson, you won't be sorry, I promise you. Welcome home, Mrs. Alderson. Open up there, country boy. Who is you? There's a lady that wants to get in. I don't see no lady. Then stop swilling that corn liquor. If you looks right in front of you, here I is big as life. Personal mate to Mrs. Olson. There ain't no Mrs. Olson here. Big boy, does you want this door on its hinges? Cause I was built for going right through. Ain't opening no door to no waterfront woman. Then just stay right where you is. Cause I was coming through and trump you to death. <laughs>
about time you got here. Here I come, Miss Jenny, laughing and scratching. The name is Mrs. Alderson. Excuse me, Mrs. Alderson. Where will I put this junk, Mrs. Alderson? Put it down anywhere. What was that noise I heard? It woke me up. I had a scuffle at the door. That slave that calls himself Napoleon didn't hanker to let me in. He all right? Yes, sir. But they's gonna have to put in a new door. Looks like we both got a warm reception. Don't mention nothing hot. When I think about my brand new queen's dress, all button scorch like. What are you shaking about? It was only a dress. Yes, sir, but I was in it. Hmm. Where's the groom? He's combing rice out of his hair. I bet his folks sure was tickled when he brought home a beautiful bride like you. Hysterical. And now, if you'll unpack and get me a dress, I'll go down and join my family. Well, hello there. What kind of contraption is that? Well, ma'am, it don't kill no flies, but it sure gets some dizzy dodging it. Doesn't anyone work around here? No, ma'am. Ground's too poor for cotton no more, and Mr. Stephen won't plant nothing else, so we just set. No wonder the place is going to pot. You can't make money when you just set. No, but you sure can catch up on a heap of rest. I picked these flowers for your room. Oh, how sweet of you. And some mint to make your toddy. David always said they were so refreshing. Thank you, Miss Catherine. And Catherine. I'm so glad Alan brought you home. I'm glad to know I rang the bell with one member of the family. Oh, I liked you right away. Your brother and sister are so, so different. Well, Julia and Stephen have such a lot of family pride. I do hope you try to understand and not let it upset you. I won't. And Alan's such a fine boy, really. Where is he? I, I don't know. I haven't seen him. David would never have left me on our wedding day. But modern men, I guess, are different. David, he was my fiancé. Oh, he was so handsome. And we were so much in love, like lovers are in books. But you never married? Oh, no, no. Everything was ready. Our wedding dress was all white lace. But... But what? Here we are back again. I'll, I'll put the flowers in your room. He plays just beautiful. Yes, Julia. Your sleeve is torn. Is it? That lovely lace that your grandmother wore. Well, I'm so sorry. How careless you are. Where have you been? Well, I was just picking some mint and... How stupidly careless. With the few nice things you have. I'll go change. Julia. 
she's such a darling, Aunt Catherine. She was telling me about her fiancé, David. What's she been telling you? She was starting to tell me what happened to him. What was it? He jilted her on the wedding day. We really were glad, weren't we, Stephen? Yes. He was just riffraff. Catherine was well rid of him. But if she loved him... Poor Aunt Catherine. Foolish, Catherine, you mean? Come, Julia, it's time to dress for supper. If Alan's wife will excuse us. Yes, and I'm sure she'll want to change that costume she's wearing. What's wrong with this dress? Cost a pot of money. I sent all the way down to New Orleans for it. But of course, the price would make it in good taste. It suits you perfectly. I didn't know you were home. Well, aren't you going to ask me where I've been all day? Why should I? Wife, aren't you? It's a wise wife that doesn't ask. What's that you're playing? Oh, just a couple of thoughts I tried to put together once upon a time. Nice. Well, haven't you had enough of it yet? No, I like it. The shadows, I mean. It isn't going to work out, Jenny. We Aldersons are a queer lot. We don't like one another. We like outsiders even less. So I gather. We are the shadows, don't you understand? No matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, you'll never become part of us. Never. I'll take my chances. Why should you want to become part of all of this darkness and bitterness? I made a bargain. You were cheated. We'll take everything you have to give, and you'll get nothing in return. Nothing at all. That's my gamble. I should have told you all this last night. Last night, I was too drunk to care what happened to either one of us. And now, when you're sober? Give it up, Jenny. Leave the shadows before you do become an Alderson. Thanks for the warning. Your carriage, Mr. Allen. Are you going out? I didn't mean to ask. Oh, that's quite all right, Mrs. Alderson. I'm dining out. I always dine out. Dining with my family is something more than gastronomic endurance can withstand. You a mint toddy, Jenny. Thank you. Drink it, dear. It'll perk you up. You look sort of tuckered out. Oh, I'm all right. It's so nice having someone in the house to do things for. Someone young and gay. Someone who laughs. I don't feel much like laughing right now. Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. I want you to be happy here. Then you won't ever leave. Leave? Please don't ever leave here. Ever. No, dear, I won't. Julia. Why are you here at this hour? I just brought Jenny a toddy. It's late. You better be getting to bed. Very well, Julia. Will you please not encourage Catherine? She's not very well. At least nothing upsets her. Then there's always trouble. behind my back? Yes, a tree. Since when can a tree walk? It's just a tree outside the window. Oh. What's that? What's what? That flapping sound. Oh, Chloe, you're hearing things. Go fill my tub. Yes, sir. Did you say something then? I hope. No. Did you breathe hard? No. Then it's a ghost, that's what it is. Oh, Chloe, you don't believe in ghosts, do you? No, ma'am. But I was afraid of them. Shoo! Get away from me, ghost! Shoo! Shoo! Kanga muidili. Kanga de futi. Kanga. Bumba kanga de futi. Bumba kanga de futi. Kanga de futi. Kanga. 
Bomba Kanga de Kala. Bomba Stop that voodoo babbling. It's just a raven. Raven? That's worse than ghosts. Ravens is a sure sign of death. Your superstitions will be the death of me. That's what I was saying, honey. Let's ski that out of this mess before the corner with the dead wagon get us. You jump right out of the fire in the frying pan. Voodoo tells me that we belongs to the levee, and let's get back there while they're still tight enough to take us. You go if you want to. I'm staying here. Dark, dink old house falling apart. Yes. Yes, that's what's wrong. No wonder people have the hoops and jingles here. Chloe will renovate the place. We'll make it bright and cheery, and, and while we're at it, we'll do a little renovating on ourselves. So they'll be proud to ask folks here to meet me. What's wrong with ourselves? That costume, for instance. What's wrong with that? I saw a hundred men rise up and whistle the first time you wore it at the Memphis Bell. That's what's wrong with it. Men aren't supposed to whistle at ladies. Honey, when men stop whistling at me, I hopes I'm dead. <laughs> Yes, indeed, Mrs. Ponsonby. The shadows does look powerful nice since we freshened it up a bit. It was so charming of you and Mrs. Raleigh to drop by. It's too bad my husband's not here, but Miss Julia and Mr. Alderson and I'll do our best to entertain you. Mrs. Raleigh, may I help you? Would you like another cup of tea? Tea? But I need to shall I. Is the company gone yet? There is no company and you know it. Yes, but I was wondering if you know it. Honey child, I wonder if you sees what I sees. Pierre's like you's gonna have company after all. He wouldn't dare come here. That sure was a quick visit he paid someone. Chloe, come away from that door. You knows how it is, honey child. You can't stop a man from just looking. Hi, Angel. Oh. Hello. I was just passing down the lane and thought I'd drop in and see how the great lady was getting on. Splendidly, thank you. How are they treating you, Jenny? Why, then, they're charming. All of them. There isn't enough they can do for me. Taking me places, inviting their friends here. Yes, I see your name in the society column every morning. I thought you might be interested in hearing about an elegant little shack I've just opened, the King's Club. Where quality can spend its idle hours and lose change. Very interesting. We're throwing quite a shindig down there tonight to baptize it. And I thought that between dining with his honor the mayor and stopping by Mrs. Reginald Fuss Budget Soiree, you might like to drop in. For old times' sake. Yes, why don't you run down there, Jenny? I'm sure all your friends would miss you if you weren't there. And a lady never neglects her old friends, even if she has to meet them clandestinely. My error, ma'am. Nice to have seen you, Jenny. Come in. Yes, you're tardy, dear. Thank you, Aunt Catherine. It is refreshing. I'm getting so I look forward to it every night. So do I. And to our little talks together, too. I do wish I could stay here with you instead of going to that old concert. You'll enjoy it. Well, don't you like music? Yes, I love it. Then why don't you change your mind and come with us? Well, I... I wasn't asked. You weren't? Oh, dear. Julia said you... Catherine, come along. It's getting late.
What you doing down here, honey, in this old dark, gloomy room? Doing nothing. Talking to myself. A couple more months like this, and I'll start answering myself back. Ours already is, and I was getting a passel of mighty funny answers. Why can't they even try to be civil? Make me bile inside to see you sit home alone day after day and night after Get night. Get out of here, Chloe. Yes, ma'am. But you should be making them sizzle down at the King Club opening instead of sitting here hibernating. Yes. Yes, it would be nice to go somewhere where... where somebody would be glad to see you. I said, get out of here. Yes, ma'am. But I know somebody who'd be powerful glad to see you. Honey, you is looking fine as spit silk, and his eyeballs were wild. Get out of here, quick. Yes, ma'am. And order my carriage. Mrs. Alderson is going to town. Pal, that'll teach you not to insult the lady. And you not to be pals with the pals who insults the lady, mine pal. Huh. Morris. Ay, 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 Zhenishka. If I was only 20 years younger. Ay, 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 ay. Where's Morgan? Well, follow me. I mean, I mean, I'll follow you, Mrs. Alderson. I'm so glad to see you. Well, if it ain't Miss Jenny. Hello, Big Mike. Glad to see you. Thank you. I used to have a man from that Beale Street town. Yep. How do you like it? Oh, it's wonderful. The only thing missing is you, Jenishka. Jenny, Mabel. Oh, Jenny, what a treat for sore eyes. Mabel, you look grand. <laughs> Flo. Flo. <laughs> Jenny. Oh, oh, what's the matter? Are you drowning your sorrows or just trying to irrigate them? That Mujik insulted her. He had his arms around her neck. I was holding them there. He was asking me to marry him. I was scared he'd get away. So that I ought to make you marry me. What do you want with a man who couldn't lick Boris? <laughs> the same thing I'd want with a man that couldn't lick him. <laughs> I'm not rushing, but I feel the same way. Sit down, Jim. It's beautiful here. Makes a Memphis bell look like an old tug. Had something, though. That old tug. I miss it sometimes. Do you? I miss you, Jim. Not too much, I notice. Oh, you mean that? Well, my doctor thought that I ought to eat more and, and at the same time get exercise. So when I finish your course at this side of the table, I run around to that side. Oh. How did you like my number, dear? Great. Fine. Now you run along and give him an encore. Not a bad number herself. Well, what did you expect? Find me in sackcloth, pouring ashes over my head? Expect me to go into mourning? Now, no, Jack, you don't have to explain, I understand. You gotta have someone around to show off your new Paris duds. Give me a cigarette. Oh, no. I haven't any fire insurance yet. Your uh, husband was just here. It's nice to see your money in circulation, even if you're not. Mrs. Ellen Alderson. Mrs. Ellen Alderson. Why don't you quit fooling yourself? Look at your eyes going from table to table. Right now you're wondering what Flo's doing. Whether somebody's gonna slip loaded dice over on the house, give you a couple of hours back here and you'll come to life again. You're not Mrs. Ellen Alderson. You're Jenny Blake flying under false colors. Get out of that rig, Jen. 
and back into your beats. I'm never coming back. I've got what I've always wanted. Respectability, a name. And all that goes with it. Roots that go back for centuries. Is that all you're getting for your money? Roots? I'm going home. Oh, Jen, I have a little present for you. It's in the office. I don't accept presents anymore. You can accept this one. Even the Aldersons had approved. Where are you going, honey? I'm hungry. Good. Now, you just sit right down and have your steak and get a little strength. Because if I'm not back in five minutes, you can take another encore. You can be nice and thoughtful at times. I bought it for you this afternoon after our little chat at your house. I was going to send it to you. Why, you... Uh-uh. You... Father hasn't turned over in his grave since you last insulted him. Here's where your pop becomes a whirling dervish, you insulting son of a horse thief. <laughs> His Excellency the Governor, His Honor the Mayor. Hmm, Jenny's gonna have quite a quilt and be. Julia, how could you countenance such a thing? I knew nothing about it. Why shouldn't Jenny give a ball if she wants to? I won't insult those people by inviting them here. You're not inviting them here. She is. I'll tell you straight out, your Aunt Julia and I won't be here. Oh, I think you will, Father. Neither one of you would dare jeopardize your bread and butter. I'll forbid it. As you say, Father. But in good society, who pays the piper usually calls the dance. Did you want me, sir? Oh, yes, Napoleon. Deliver those invitations. Yeah. Napoleon, put those things Napoleon, in the fire. Napoleon, do as you were told. Have you taken leave of your senses? Don't be a fool, Stephen. No one will come, not a blessed soul. I'll see to that. Yes. Busy, Jack? Oh, come in, General. I wonder, Jack, if you'd mind extending my credit a few thousand more. Always glad to help you boys out. Huh? I've had confounded bad luck the whole blasted afternoon. But I'll get it back tonight. Some other night, you mean? Tonight, I said. Why, aren't you going to the big Alderson ball? Big nothing. Nobody's going. Why not? They're just not, that's all. Wheel and I'll wheel, wheel in the middle of the air. 
Yeah. You see that sister dressed so fine. She ain't got heaven on her mind. What you doing? Loosening my corset, making room. I was gonna eat a whole side of beef. No eating before the dancing is over. By then, I was gonna waste away to a ghost. Ghost? Who said that? You better go fill my tub. It's getting late. And Chloe, are you sure Mr. Morgan got the invitation I gave you? That's the one I stuck out and took joy in the living pussy. Is he coming? He said I wouldn't miss that circus for nothing in the world. Then he just sat back and grinned from ear to ear. He'll swallow that grin when he sees who's here. Ain't that the truth? And honey, child, you's going to look like a rose. Classy, huh? No beads, honey? No more beads for Jenny. Now you hurry while I go see how Aunt Catherine's getting along. She's the one that's going to love this party. When I get the tub full, shall I dump in plenty smell them? I'm going to look like a rose. Might as well smell like one. Oh, Catherine, you look wonderful. Oh, Jenny, it was so sweet of you to give me such a lovely dress. You're more than welcome, darling. You're going to be the belle of the ball. Well, you're just being sweet to me. Before you came, I used to think I couldn't stand it here sometimes. You've helped me over some rough spots, too. Dear, I'm messing your dress up. I had a dress something like this the night I met him. I had my picture taken in it. Would you like to see it? I'd love to. Here it is. It's just as you are now. Oh. All but the flowers in your hair. Well, I must get some flowers. If I'm to be the belle of the ball. Catherine. Where's Catherine? She's out on the balcony. I was just picking some flowers for my hair. Your face is flushed. I, I was showing Jenny my picture. I'm sure you were boring, Alan's wife. I wasn't bored. I've asked you not to excite her. Tonight's excitement's not going to do any harm. <laughs> Gracious, I've got to get dressed. I'll be late for the party. What have you been telling her? Nothing. I didn't tell her anything. I didn't, I didn't, I swear I didn't, Julia, I swear it. Put him by the punch bowl. Light them in the next room now. Uh. Napoleon. When the guests start arriving, be sure and announce them formally. I know my etiquette, ma'am. This is my honey child's biggest night. I was so proud, I was busting clean out my corset. But don't you bust around here, because in this family, we don't mention the personal articles of feminine attire. Hmm. With them highfalutin words, you should get your personality whitewashed, Napoleon. Mortify yourself, woman. The guests are about to arrive. Don't forget to play lots of waltzes. Yes, ma'am. I understand the governor likes them. So do I. Catherine, I think that dress is much too décolleté for your age. Oh, how can you say that about my... Oh, Jenny, everything looks so beautiful. Yes, as it used to look, dear, years ago. Aunt Julia, we've had our little differences, but you've been so wonderful about this evening. I want to thank you for helping me. Well, that's all right, Jenny. After all, you are Alan's wife. Even so, I do want you to know I appreciate it. A very pretty speech, Mrs. Alderson. But, Alan, you're not even dressed. And in nice condition for the ball. What ball, Aunt Julia? Your wife's ball, of course. Have you been drinking, Aunt Julia? Or don't you have to be drunk to lie? Alan. 
Nobody's coming to your party, Jenny. Not a single solitary soul. My sainted aunt saw to that. Pay no attention to him. He's drunk. Yes, Jenny, I'm drunk. But I see things clearer that way, hear things more distinctly. The sly laughs of your friends, for instance. I just found out, Jenny, that she's had it whispered everywhere that this is your ball. That she and my father and your devoted husband will be out of town. That's not true. Oh, isn't there going to be any lovely party? Well, my exquisite torturers, are you happy? Too bad I had to interrupt you. By the end of this evening, you'd have been delirious with joy watching her suffer. Alan, you know I have no patience with you when you're drinking. Brigadier General and Miss Rodney Prendergast. Mr. and Mrs. Philip Somerville. Miss Rosalie Henderson. Mr. and Mrs. Josephus Allen B. They is here. The guess I'm arriving, honey. The Honorable Mr. and Mrs. Peyton Lee. Mr. Samuel Blankford. Good evening, Mr. Lawford. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Lawford. Mr. and Mrs. Lawford. Greetings, Your Honor. Good evening. His Honor the Mayor and wife. His Honor the Mayor and wife. Good evening, Your Excellency. His Excellency, the governor and family. Uh-huh. His Excellency, the governor and his family. your gambling daughter-in-law and decided to appear. I might ask you why your refusal became an acceptance. A political wife shouldn't answer personal questions until her husband's out of office. Then I'll write a book, Stephen, and you'll know why we came. Well, that leaves only Alderman Devons, who hasn't shown up. Ex-Alderman Devons. As of tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> I didn't like the laws he was passing anyway. Finished with politics, Mr. Devons. You see, you were wrong about Aunt Julia. I can't understand it. You will tell her you're sorry for what you said, won't you, Alan? May I? Lovely party, Mrs. Alderson. You and your wife being here tonight means everything to me, Your Excellency. Thank you, my dear. Being here tonight means everything to me. Good evening. May I? Lovely party, isn't it, Mr. Morgan? Ain't it? Will you have the next dance with me, Mrs. Alderson? I'd be delighted, Mr. Alderson. Don't you just love dancing, Major? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. Sorry to be late. Well, that's all right. I know how hard it is for you to tear yourself away from Dolores. Lovely gal, Dolores. She eats like a horse, but sings like a canary. Like a canary with the croup. My taste in women is notoriously bad. I don't like ladies. You're not a very good loser, Jackson. They're dancing for their supper, aren't they? You don't know it, honey. But they're dancing for all three meals. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Alderson has been fortunate in obtaining for your pleasure and edification this evening a core of French dancers who have just arrived in this country after making a sensational success in a new dance, which is the rage of Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, Mademoiselle Florine and her Cordy dance. 
cost me $2,500. I sent all the way to New York for them. Come with me and you shall see a new tipsicory. It's new and very gay, danced in such a daring way. First the lady rolls her eyes, the lady softly sighs, then from papa up to king, everybody starts to sing. Jackson, they like it. And they'll like you, too. Or else. Wake up, honey, baby. Wake up, honey. Oh, go away, Chloe. I don't want to wake up. Party's over, honey. Just leave me with a memory and a busted head. Then it was real. If you had my head, you wished it wasn't. And that Napoleon, baby, when that man loosens up, he just dissolves. Such a beautiful party. Get up now, honey. Miss Julia's downstairs. Says she want to see you right away. Miss Julia? Yes, sir. What does she want? I don't know him. She just told me she wants to see you. Give me my robe. Don't move so fast, honey child. Got to get the corn liquor wrung out of my eyeballs before I can see you. Go back to bed. Can't. Unless I go and find a bed that'll spin with the room. Every time I lays down, the floor rears up, looks me in the eye, and snares. He's a beauty. He's yours, Jenny. Mine? With a horse of your own, you'll be able to get around more. But Aunt Julia... As you said yesterday, we have had our little differences, but that's all in the past. I hope you'll accept him. Oh, accept him? Whoa, there. 
I'm sorry you're in trouble, Mrs. Dixon. I know now why the horse brought me down this road. Back there at the turn, he made up our minds before I had a chance to. Mrs. Alderson, my darky's not accustomed to seeing ladies drive. It's disturbing him. Would you let him get back to work? I'd like to be home in time to dress for dinner. Will you hop right in here and I'll get you home before you can say bustle? You're awfully kind, but I prefer to wait for my own driver. After all, Jack Morgan's not here to threaten my husband into making me do something I have no desire to do. Jack Morgan? Yes. It was a lovely party, Mrs. Alderson, and I sent my note of appreciation to Jack Morgan. Morgan. Well, if it ain't sugar. So, you insist on sticking your nose into my business. Well, look, baby. For the last time, stay out of my life. Jen! I don't know how Miss Jenny got here. She must have walked the horse all the way, I'm sure. Was that horse enough to... Miss Jenny, Miss Jenny, you had an order to get in that carriage. I told Miss Judy when I sold her the horse that you... Wait! Mr. Morgan, that's the horse I sold the Aldersons for stud. I'm not interested in the horse's married life. But that horse is blind. Blind? Are you sure? I'm not sure, but I'm certain. And I told Miss Julie when I sold her the horse. Shaken up a bit, sir. Oh, terrible. Bring her right over here. What's happened to her? Apparently, your wife's had some kind of accident. She sure has, ma'am. Get some smelling salts, Alan. Yeah, give her this. Napoleon, send for Dr. Childers. Yes, sir. I guess I'll... I guess I lost control of my horse. You reckon you're all right, Jen? Yes, I'm all right. What are you doing in this house? I told you down there. Yes, that, I know. Well, I meant what I said. The Aldersons don't care for your company, and neither do I. All right, Mrs. Alderson. You wanted society, now you've got it, and you can keep it. But we're changing the advertising down at the King's Club. I don't want quality there, because you and your relatives might try to get in. And I don't want any part of you or them from now on. I'm glad we understand each other at last. When you go driving after this, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Look him square in the eyes, and you'll find he's blind. Blind? Blind as a bat. Miss Julia ought to know. The veterinary told her when she bought him. Goodbye, gentle people. You knew that horse was blind when you gave him to me. Julia. You can't believe that. It's obvious the veterinary made a dishonest deal and is trying to squirm his way out of it. Yeah, that's it. I've known the old scoundrel for years. 
You've also known your sister for a number of years, Mr. Alderson. Yet from the look on your face, you're not quite sure what she could be capable of. Young woman. Let her finish, Stephen. She seems to have some odd fixation that we wish her harm. Just why exactly? Because I'm Mrs. Alderson and you can't stomach it. Because there's something awful wrong here at the shadows. Something I see in your faces when you... You don't think I'm looking at you. The terrible something that changed Aunt Catherine from a beautiful young girl to a frightened, helpless old woman. Something you're afraid I'm going to find out about. That's why you dislike me. Dislike you? I despise you, just as every other decent person in this town does. And I demand that you leave this house at once. Me leave? Why, I own the place. Oh, no, Aunt Julia. I'm not going to leave. You are. You and any other Alderson that wants to leave with you. Did you ring, ma'am? Take that tally up to Miss Jenny. Yes. Oh, Julia, that's my job, fixing Jenny's toddy. Napoleon, do as you're told. But you never fixed it for her before. Now, don't be childish. Julia, your shoes are muddy. You've been to the swamp. Yes, I went down to see how bad the poison hemlock was. One of the pickaninnies ate some of the berries by mistake and died. Must have it cleared out. It was hemlock. You put hemlock in that toddy. You want to kill her like you killed my David. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, should be quiet. You heard what she said? Did she throw us out? Alderson's that barge woman. You hate her because she's beautiful. You're a cruel, jealous woman. You killed my David on our wedding night because you were jealous. He loved me and you wanted him. Please. You might as well have killed me. And now you want to hurt her, but I won't let you. I won't. Be quiet. You're not going to think about Jenny Blake. You're going to think about us. About me, the first Alderson to be turned out of the shadows, and by a stranger. You can't let that happen to me, can you? Now, can you? Of course you can't. We're the same blood, born in the same bed. I'm your sister. You'll never tell. You'll never tell. I'm your sister. Your sister. You have a party, man. Put it over there. May I? I changed my mind since I was downstairs. I don't want the shadows. I don't want to live here anymore. You can give it all back to your family with my compliments. Where will you go? To the King's Club? Well, hardly after what Jack Morgan said down there. Where will you go? Don't worry about me. I'll take care of myself. I have before and I will again. I'm leaving here. That's all that matters. Ginny, you're a gambler. Did you ever begin playing a game for penny ante stakes and then in the middle of the game find yourself playing for dollars? What are you talking about? Well, there must be some better angle on our bargain than the one we have. Maybe if we both look for it hard enough. It wouldn't work, Helen. I've stopped fooling myself. Well, maybe in some other city. New Orleans, perhaps. Or nobody knows that you're Jenny Blake or I'm an Alderson. You can't stop being an Alderson. No, I guess not. No, you have to see your way of life break apart. See your land die and your house fall to bits. Your spirit's broken and your heart incapable of anything but hate. Afraid to die, but despising life. Have to see all of that, Jenny, to be an Alderson. And by Jupiter, that was a long speech and it calls for a drink. May I? Yes, of course. You know, I've never been able to look at a full glass without drinking it. There ain't no moon, there ain't no sun In the place where time ain't never begun Devil laughs when he picks you out. That's what I'm singing all about. 
as cane charms against murdering wives, stop step hiding and dulls the knives. Hangman's ready and he's got his rope. Shut your big mouth, skin and bones, before I mess up these steps with your remains. The place is full, Auntie. As a witness. Oh, all right. But why did this woman, this Jenny Blake of the Memphis Bell, murder Alan Alderson? What offense did this gentleman, this scion of an old and respected family, commit against the defendant to put murder in her heart? I'll tell you, gentlemen, I'll unfold our whole story step by step till it becomes as clear to you as it is to me. How she schemed to abandon the sordid life of her gambling ship to invade the precincts of high Memphis society. How she plotted with her sweetheart, Jack Morgan, to become queen of the carnival. How society rejected her. And how she plotted then to avenge herself by tricking Alan Alderson into marrying her. But with no intention of being his wife, gentlemen. She had no need of a husband's tender love. Love she already had and continued to have from somebody else. And how for months thereafter, Alan Alderson endured his humiliation in silence. Until finally, desperately in love with her and tortured beyond human ken, he sought his rightful place as her husband. And for that, gentlemen, the defendant killed him. Let him to change your venue. Order. The defendant has a right to a chance for a life which he won't get in this prejudice court. You're in contempt of court, sir. And I might add, Mr. Morgan, your days of demanding things in this state are just about over. You were aware, Mr. Alderson, that your son became despondent after his marriage to the defendant, and that this despondency increased day by day? Yes. Would you say it was because of his wife's unwifely conduct toward him? I can't say. I don't know. You have stated that the defendant was in the habit of meeting Jack Morgan clandestinely. Will you please tell us where? One evening in a secluded part of the garden. There were other times? Yes, many other times. Did you ever visit Mrs. Alderson at the Shadows after her marriage? Once. You will please answer yes or no. Did she ever visit you at your gambling house? Once. You were in love with her, weren't you? I object! I object! Hold on! Hold on! I can't restate your question. You will admit that there was a sort of love between you and the defendant. Logan, I knew you were a double-cross and no-good leech when I got you elected district attorney. And I thought that someday I might have to remove you. But I didn't think I was going to have to kill you. Give it to him, Mr. Jack. Give it to him. And if you need any help, you can call on us. That's right. There's nothing we enjoy better than tearing district attorneys apart. Sit down, then. Don't you shout Sit at me. Sit down. And what's more, don't you ever stand me up again. <laughs> Did you see the glass of toddy in her room that night? Yes, sir. But I seen it there every night, and there wasn't no poison in it. I kind of sip it myself some night when Miss Jenny didn't drink it all. And perhaps Mr. Alderson used to sip it once in a while. And Mrs. Alderson knew that. No, sir, he did not. Anyway, my honey child never mixed them drinks that night. Not my honey child. She wouldn't have hurt nobody. She's hot, big, and good. She isn't as bad as you was trying to make her. No, sir, she didn't mix them drinks. Now, Miss Alderson, I must ask you a few questions. Was it your custom to mix a mint toddy for the defendant and take it up to her room every night? Yes. And on the night of your nephew's death, did you take her a toddy? I... I can't remember. Now pull yourself together, Miss Alderson, and answer my question. I'm your sister. Your sister. We were born in the same bed. You'll never tell. You'll never tell. I'm your sister. I'm your sister. Did you take her the toddy? Yes. Did you mix the toddy yourself and know all of its ingredients? Yes. 
And to the best of your knowledge, when you entered the defendant's room that night with the toddy, it contained the same kind and number of ingredients you had used on previous evenings? Trying to break your back Cause you come from the no good side of the track Before I pronounce sentence upon you Is there anything you wish to say? I didn't kill my husband and you know it The reason I'm here convicted of a crime I never committed Is because I wanted to be like you Quality I didn't see the meanness, the cruelty, the jealousy I heard laughter, but I didn't know how empty it was. I wanted to get away from the Flows, the Mabels, the Jackson Morgans, because they were like myself, trash. I know now I left real people, warm people, for trash. Yes, trash that sits around hating, sits around waiting for slavery to come back, for cotton to come back, for the ghosts of their sons to come back. Zombies, the living dead who haven't the decency to lie down and stay buried. That been on a give it to them. You came here like vultures to see me convicted of Alan's death. To hear the scandal about Jackson Morgan and myself. Was I just his partner in the Memphis Bill or in further ventures? Even now, you're still eaten up with curiosity. Well, move closer and I'll tell you. I love Jackson Morgan. And there's no law now that says I can't. You can hang me and I'll still go on loving him. Is that all? Jenny Alderson, for the willful and premeditated murder of your husband, Alan Alderson, I hereby sentence you to be taken to the place from whence you came, that's to the place of execution. No, no, I lied, I lied. It was Julia, she mixed that drink, put poison in it. She wanted to kill Jenny, just as she killed my David years ago. I kept still because I'm an Alderson. But I'm glad Alan's dead. I wish we were all dead. All the Aldersons. I'm free. Will you... Will you have me now, Jackson? Only if you'll promise to... sew my buttons and... cook my meals and... darn my socks. All right, honey. I'll darn your socks, but I'm warning you. From now on, you're going to be known up and down the river as barefoot checks. to cook and sew and darn my socks. Why can't you keep your word? Because I'm Jenny Blake and no lady. Changing the name of this place to the Queen's Club. Everybody's saying I'm handpicked. My father would be awfully unhappy if he heard that. Oh, go hang your father. Why, sugar, that's just what they did. Oh. 